How's everyone doing? It's good to be here. My name is Sean Apking. I'm the lead pastor of Cornerstone Church. I've been to be about a year since I've been back, and I, I love the new building. I, I like it a lot better than the middle school. Amen. How many guys would agree with that? Amen. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Well, if you don't know who I am, I, I, I've been in a pastor in this area since 1993, either youth pastor or lead pastor at Cornerstone, and uh, started lead pastoring in 2010, and um, I have uh, a wonderful wife. She is everything to me. If she, if, if she wasn't there, I would be nothing. Her name is Lisa, and she's actually at our church right now and uh, helping uh, uh, lead that this morning. And, and I have three, do- three kids. I have uh, two daughters. One is 22 years old. She's getting married. Everybody say amen. Get her off my bankroll. Amen. She's getting married to a musician. I don't know about that. We'll see how that works out. Now he's a great guy, loves Jesus, and uh, they're getting married next year. And I have a uh, young, young, younger daughter. She's eight years old, named Victoria Joy. And then I have a middle son. Pray for him. Amen. He's uh, he's 14 years old. He's six one, and he's almost as handsome as I am. Amen. Amen. No, he is. He's a, he's a great kid. He's also just a great musician, loves Jesus, a worship leader. Um, in fact, my wife's a worship leader. In fact, all my kids uh, can, will be le- leading worship in some way. Amen. Well, I'm glad to be here today. I think I have a word for you. Is that okay? I mean, I think it's a word of faith. And, and in fact, the, the title is Moving Forward in Faith. You know, faith is a, sometimes a hard concept to grasp and, and really to have consistency, consistency on, to be faithful, to believe God. In fact, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And uh, so if you study faith, it's like you, it's, it's, it's always trusting in God and the things of God and, and, uh, and never doubting and everything. But everyone I have ever read in the Bible has doubted besides Jesus. They always struggled with faith. How many ever struggled with believing God? Amen. Just raise your hand. It's okay in church. You can be truthful. Right? Amen. I mean, he's ever struggled with that, and and, and a lot of times I've I, I've heard I have heard people preach that you can't have faith and doubt, and I I don't know else how to live. I have faith, I have trust in God, but I also doubt God in in, in a lot of times. But I know faith is important because in, in the book of Hebrews, he, Hebrews eleven six says, "Without faith, is impossible to please God." How many guys want to please God? So we have to have faith. Faith is important uh, in in the Bible, and we must have that. But you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I'm not always a faith-filled person. There's sometimes I struggle. How many ever struggled with faith? Struggled in believing with God. You know, the last seven years of my life haven't been the best years of my life. Let me just be honest with you. Is it okay to be honest in church? Yes. Amen? And so, um, you know, in 2011, I almost died. I was on, in the hospital, almost died. I, uh, in, in 2015, my church went through a terrible struggle, and, uh, and I almost lost everything. And I'm going to be honest with you, there's times in those times of struggles that I, I just really doubt God, and I've, I've been a man of faith. I've been a man of faith and power. You're, I'm a pastor. I'm not supposed to doubt. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I doubt. I have issues. I have you know, the struggles that we go through. And I know it's important for us to, to believe God. I mean, if in Hebrews chapter 4, it talks about there's two groups of people that heard the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. But only one accepted it because only one mixed it with faith. So faith is very important. But can I have faith in God and also doubt God at the same time? I think we can. I hope we can because it seems like that's happened in my life. And so one time, I, I'm just struggling with this, because at, and one of the struggles that I was going through in, in my ministry and in my life, I began to question some things about the Lord. And I, you, know, you know, God's not scared of your questions. In fact, He wants you to bring them to Him. And so I, I started questioning God in a, a, on, on some things. And I, I was brought to a, a verse in Mark chapter 9, verse 23. And this, this is a, a dad who brings his kid to the Lord because there's something wrong when he's demon-possessed. 
And he tells Jesus, Jesus, if, and he says these words, if you can, help him. And Jesus responds in verse 23, if I can, if you can, said Jesus. I mean, that, that's just, he was, he was saying, well, of course I can. I'm the son of God. I'm, and then he goes on and he says, all things are possible for who believe, for if you believe. Everything is possible if you believe. And then immediately the boy's dad, he cries out, oh, I do believe. But can you help my unbelief? <laughs> How many has ever been there before? I do believe, but can you help my unbelief? See, I, and then Jesus goes on and he, he heals the boy. He casts out the demon. You know, there's, there's, there's struggles in our life as a believer. And a lot of times you can be this man of faith and woman of faith at times, and then all of a sudden you're just, a, you're just crying and, and held up in a corner, rolled up in a ball, you know. But can you still have faith in those times? And I'm going to tell you, you can. And I'm going to show you how. I've gone through a lot in my life and understand that. There's a woman in, in Luke chapter 8. We call her the woman with the issue of blood. She had a disease that no one, and she spent all her money, everything that she had, trying to find doctors who could heal her, and no one could. And you've got to understand this disease is, uh, is an issue of blood. Any kind of blood-type disease in that day, you were considered unclean. You, you're not really supposed to be out in public. And so here this lady is, and she was following Jesus and just knew that, man, if I, if I could touch him, I'll be healed. And so we hear the story, and she goes, and the Bible says she's, she pressed through the crowd, and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and she was healed. But we really don't see really the back story of this. She had to press through the crowd. In fact, the Bible talks about, in some version, it says the crowd at that time was thronging Jesus. That means they were, it was hard to get through. How many guys went, remember the Royals won or World, the World Series a few years back? How many, how many went down, downtown to, to see them? It was like that, you know? You could barely get anywhere. And uh, my, my wife is not a sports person at all. She calls me up on the phone. She, uh, she says, hey, I'm in a lot of traffic right now. What, what's going on? I says, where are you at? She says, I'm downtown Kansas City. <laughs> and she says, it looks like I'm in the middle of a parade. And she was in the middle of the parade. She got on the parade route a little bit. My wife is so funny. Don't drive with her. Trust me. Anyway, and so, and, and so this lady we don't really hear the backstory. It wasn't just that she was just this faithful woman and she went out and touched Jesus and she was healed. And a lot of the testimonies, that all, that's what we hear. But we don't really hear about the struggle of faith. Paul talks about, I fight the good fight of faith. And here this lady was going through the crowd and she had this issue of blood. She was unclean. And you got to imagine this. They weren't that nice. She wasn't supposed to be there. She was probably told, get away. What are you doing? She was probably pushed, punched, whatever, to get her away from them. And what did she do? She kept on pressing forward in faith. See, listen, let, let me tell you something. Some of you have dreams. You have goals. You have a heart to do something for the Lord. God's put something, a dream for your family, a dream for your marriage, a dream for your kids. And there's a struggle going on. There's questions that happens during this struggle. See, this, this woman probably had questions as she's going, God, why are people treating me this way? God, why don't you open up the sea of people like you did the, the Red Sea? Why don't you allow it to be easy? I mean, why? I'm sure this lady had some, some questions about going and getting what she believed God was going to have for her. But, but one thing she didn't do, she didn't quit. She didn't stop. She continued. She moved forward in faith, even in the midst of probably her doubts. When I was going through some hard times, I had some questions from the Lord. There were three questions that... When we doubt God's goodness that we, a lot of times we ask the Lord, and I, I'm the same way. I went to the Lord with these questions, and the first question was, and, and I, I was believing God. I was either believing God for my healing, or I was believing God that, man, God, we're going to see great things happen in our church, and we're going we're gonna to see God move. You know, in my office, I have this picture in my office of Chief Stadium. 
And uh, in, the, in, the, in that picture, right next to it is a, is a quote from Cesar Fajardo. He's a, he's a guy from South America, and he says, God invented sports. Everybody can say amen to that. God invented sports for men to build stadiums. Now get this, for the church to use. Amen? How many guys believe that? Amen? And I want to have a part of that in Kansas City. I want to see the church having to use Chiefs Stadium, Royal Stadium seven days a week. I have that heart, but when I'm going through this problem in my body, in my church, that I, I'm doubting this. God, you gave me this dream many years ago. You gave me this heart many years ago. What's, what's going on? What, what's happening? I, I felt like, God, I, are you even there? And this is one of the questions, God, do you really have my best interest at heart? You brought me to this place, and here I'm having a struggle. You called me. You asked me to come here, and I'm having this struggle. Do you really have my best interest at heart? You know, God knew that there's going to be times that we would be so enveloped by fear We'd be so enveloped in uncertainty that we would lose sight of his goodness. That circumstances would be so difficult that would cause us to question, God, do you really love me? Or can I trust you to help me move forward? And you know, the Israelites were no exception. They had that same thing. They had messed up and they had screwed up. Can I, can I say screwed up? I said it in the first service. I guess I can say it in the second service, right? How many, how many are screwed up? Just raise your hand. Everybody should just raise your hand. Tell, tell your neighbor, that's you. You're screwed up. Amen. You can say it, say it in that way. You know, I, I, how many, we screwed up. We screw up all the time. And, and the Israelites were no exception. They screwed up. And they were cast into captivity to Babylon. Their circumstances were so difficult that they began to question the Lord. It seemed like that there was no end in sight. And then God comes on the scene in Jeremiah 29, 11, And he tells him, he says, For I know the plans I have to you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God, do you really have my best interest at heart? God, do you, can I trust you with everything? And God says, yes. I have plans for you. And I, you know, I'm glad I'm on the other side of some things right now. Amen? It's good to be on the other side. I've been through struggles, and I know there may be even more struggles to come, but I've been, I'm on the other side of that. And I look back, and I'm just so thankful that he never left me. He never forsake me, and he was leading me and guiding me all the way, and I'm so thankful that I didn't give up. You've got to keep moving forward. Does God have your best interest at heart? Yes, and you may be in the middle of a struggle, and you're worried about that, and you don't understand, God, why am I here? And I don't, I don't understand everything that goes on. And some things are God, some things are us, some things are the devil, some things are other people, and, I, and sometimes you don't know what is what. But God has your best interest at heart. Keep moving forward. He has a hope. He has a future for you. Keep moving forward. The second question I came to the Lord and asked, I said, God, is, is the best really yet to come? See, when we struggle to believe that the best is ahead, it's often a result of because of some crippling pain or some struggles that we're going through, some loss that we had in our life. And we ask the Lord, is the best yet to come? And listen, I'm 47 years old. I know I look 20, but I'm 47 years old. And I, and I wonder, God, I go through struggles even today, God, and God, is, is the best yet to come? I mean, I look at that picture in my office, God, is this really going to happen? I question God sometimes. Is the best yet to come? Heck, on my 40th birthday. You know, I had planned my 40th birthday. I planned on getting a, a Camaro. Amen. I plan on spending a lot of money and uh, on myself. And I, and I planned on, on, you know, I, I planned my midlife crisis. I was planning it out. Amen. And what happened on my 40th birthday is I got sick. And it started the process of six months into the place where I went finally found myself at KU Medical Center almost dying. That was my 40th birthday. And I'm wondering, God, and after I got out of the hospital at that time, went to physical therapy, spent 23 days in the hospital, I couldn't walk. I was in a wheelchair for, for almost six months. I, was, I, had a, I had a walker. 
for six months after that. Then finally was able to go to Cain's. I mean, I'm, I'm 40 some years old and, and I'm driving around in my scooter at Walmart and, and I have an old people stop, older people stop me asking me, Sean, where did you get your wheels? It wasn't the way I planned my life. I, I planned on having a Camaro, not a scooter. Is the best yet to come. It reminds me of a story in the Bible by a guy named Job. Job was a man who had lost everything. He lost his fortune, his health, his home, every one of his children. He did nothing wrong. He did nothing to deserve it. You may be going through some things and you're wondering, God, why did I, I don't deserve this. You might have been gone through a divorce. Your children may be rebelling. Your marriage may be in shambles. You might have been let go of your job. You may not deserve it. And this is a guy in his pain, Job, lost everything. And he often wondered, God, do, are you listening? How many ever been there? God, are you there? Are you listening? And Job not only wanted that, God, do you even care about what I'm going through? I know that struggle. God, do, are you there? Do you really even care? And in his pain, he was wondering that. And so he got to the point where he begged God, God, kill me, because he was afraid that there was nothing left to live for. Is the best yet to come? He would have said no. But Job, Job did something surprising. In the midst of this pain, in the midst of his suffering, in the midst of him even asking God to kill him, Job started to worship the God that he thought abandoned him. He started to worship him. See, the thing about it is what Job did, he didn't quit. He started to move forward in faith. See, God took note of Job's faith in spite of his suffering, in spite of his doubting, in spite of, of everything that was going on in his mind and him wanting to totally give up. The Lord changed everything for him, blessed the latter part of his life more than his former Gave him twice as much that he's, as he had before. The story reminds us that our story isn't over yet. That the pain of our past, the pain that we are feeling right now, is an opportunity to see God move and use his power in your life. No matter what you've lost, God is working. And in this very moment, I want you to know he's working to restore what you have lost. He's working to restore your life and to change everything about it. And yes, the best is yet to come. It is not the end of your story right now. You may just be in an intermission. Let me tell you something. The end of your story is not there. It is written on the hand of God. God knows it and he has placed it in your life. He knows where you're going and he wants to make you a success. Amen? The best is yet to come. And the third question I ask God, God, do you really love me unconditionally? Because maybe somewhere along the road we took a wrong turn. Maybe somewhere along the road I messed up. Maybe there was some bad choices that we've made. But God, do you still love me unconditionally? Because we can look back and regret. And I look back on the things in the past seven years. God, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have said this. I wish I would have changed that. Amen? In my life physically, I wish I would have got to a doctor earlier. I wish I would have got to the right doctor earlier. I mean, we all have these regrets, and, and God, I made mistakes. Do you love me unconditionally? And it reminds me of a story of David, King David. David certainly believed the same when he rebelled against God. He got a married woman pregnant. He murdered her husband to cover it up because he didn't want anybody to know about it. But David goes on to describe an unconditional love that he found in the midst of his struggle of faith. In the midst, you know, that wasn't God's plan for him to do that. He messed up. But this is what God did. 2 Samuel 22, verse 17. This is what David described. 
He says, God reached down from on high, and he took hold of me. And he drew me out of the deep waters. He, took, he came down from on high, and he took hold of me. I mean, there's, there's a time of my, my doubting, my, my asking questions that, am I really, I'm going to be honest, can I be honest, cursing God for what happened? In the midst of me being angry at God, I felt God's love come into my, my room and grab hold of me. And love me no matter what. In the midst of my doubt, in the midst of my questions, in the midst of my anger, God came down and he loved me. That's what he did to David. He reached down from on high and David said he took hold of me and he drew me out of the waters. And he rescued me. Verse 20, and he delighted in me. Oh my goodness. Listen church. God loves you unconditionally. No matter if it was your fault, no matter if it was your rebellion, He loves you, and the plans that He has for you are still there. The calling of God is still there, and it is for you and I to capture and to move forward. God is not done with you. He delights in you. So come to Him. Yes, repent and, and confess those things that you did wrong, but allow Him to, to grab hold of you and love you and hold you and to remind you that He's still your God and He loves you and the best is yet to come. And He's willing to bring you to, through it. Those struggles that you're going through, start moving forward in faith. See, the key to be a man and woman of faith is not perfection, it's persistence. The key to be a man and woman of faith is not that you have to be perfect. You just have to be persistent. To not give up. To not quit. To be like that woman with the issue of blood. No matter if someone puts you down and throws you down in the mud and the dirt, you're going to get back up because you've got a plan. God's given you a plan. He's given you a goal to reach. He's given you faith to do it. And you're going to get back up and you're going to continue. No matter what people say around you, you're going to still continue in what God has for you. It's having that faith as small as a mustard seed. No matter how big your doubt may seem, faith as small as a mustard seed, it can't, it's no bigger. That doubt can't control your faith. Faith is so strong, Jesus said. And we can choose to follow our doubts or we can choose to follow faith. Job decided to follow faith in God, to trust him. That's why he began to worship him. David allowed the Lord to come down and love on him even when he felt unlovable. And the woman with the issue of blood, she knew and trusted that if she would just touch Jesus, she would be healed. And so she didn't quit. She didn't stop. We need to move forward in faith. I'm going to give you four things on how to move forward in faith. Number one, you must hear the word of God. I can't express to you enough how important your Bible or your Bible app is. Amen? How important for you to hear the Word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. We perish because of a lack of knowledge. Listen, when you go in through times of struggle, you need to run to the Bible. You need to run to the Word. You need to find somebody preaching online. You need to come to Church of the Four Corners website and listen to Pastor Craig over and over again because you need it. I need to hear it. I need to hear it. Every, every day I need to hear the Word of God. I need to read it. I need to hear it preached to me and taught to me all the time. Why? Because that's how I... The seed of faith in my life, the ground in my life, I can plant that seed of faith. And if I have the word, this is what begins to happen in my struggle. The thoughts of the enemy comes to tell me to quit, but the thoughts of God are going to be louder because I hear the word of God. So when I'm in my bed dying in the hospital, I hear the word of God, you shall live and not die. Amen? Hear the word of God. 
The second thing, once you have that word in your mind, you need to start to believe the word. You have a decision to make. See, believing is not a feeling. You, know, you understand that? Believing is a decision that I choose to believe the word of God. I choose to believe God's word more than anything. And so when I, when I hear the word of God and I have the word of God in it, I speak, I hear the word of God and it's been spoken to me, I'm going to believe the word of God more than any, any other voice that I have in my head. How many of you guys have multiple voices in your head? Don't raise your hand. People think you're crazy. But you do, Right? But you believe the Word of God. That's the only voice you believe. And when you believe the Word of God, you can act on it. You can start speaking it out and start spreading it out and speaking it all over your house. That when you sin and and mess up, guess what you need to do? Get the Word of God where it tells you, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am no longer controlled by sin. I am righteous because He made me righteous. Amen? Amen? You start speaking it. You believe it. You speak the word of God, and then you do the word. Amen? That's how we see it. That's how we move forward in faith. And some of you have been in so much of a struggle that you feel like you've lost. And God said, no. Listen, the best is yet to come. Don't give up. Don't stop believing. Don't stop going after me. I am here. Get into the Word. Believe the Word. Speak the Word. And do what it says, because faith without action is dead. Do what it says. See, faith is important. Without faith, it's impossible to to please God. Through faith is how we give our life to Christ. and, And anything that is not of faith is wrong. Faith moves mountains, and it activates our prayers. Faith is vitally important to our lives and even in the midst of your doubting and your question you are still a man and woman of faith don't follow those doubts follow faith and start moving forward some of you need to take a step of faith some of you just need to believe and start taking that step out and say yes God I'm going to move forward in faith I don't know where it goes I don't know what is next. I don't feel like it. I don't know what to do with it. I mean, I have all this struggle, all this pain around me, but God, I give you control because I know you have my best interests at heart. I know the best is yet to come, and I know that you love me unconditionally, so I give you everything, and now I know I can trust you with my life. And though it hurts right now, and though I'm in pain, God, I am not staying here. You've called me to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I will fear no evil, and I will move past it, because you've got something greater in store for me. I don't know who that's for. Maybe that's for you. God has something greater in store for you. Can you believe that today? Seven years, I felt like I went through hell. But I'm so glad I'm on this side of it. And every promise that God made to me during those times has come to pass or is coming to pass. Don't give up. Don't stop. Amen? You're going into 21 days of prayer and fasting. Amen? Some of the most exciting times of my life when I do that with our church. It's time for you to rise up. I feel like the Lord's saying this to you. It's time for you to rise up out of that pit. You don't have to do it in your own strength, God says. I am there to carry you out. And I'm there to help you to get on the track that you're going to see your dreams come to pass. You guys ready for that? You want to receive that? Amen? I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. That's for some of you in here, maybe for all of you, I don't know. I don't know where you're at, but just receive that right now. And just right where you're at, say, God, I thank you for restoring to me the life that you have promised. God wants to restore that to you right now. So, Father, I just pray 
that there's many people in here and they've had struggles, they've had hard times. It hasn't been easy. And that God, I pray for them right now that they will not give up, they will not give in, they will continue and believe in faith. They'll be led by faith. What your word says, what you've told them by your Holy Spirit, that they're going to find that place, God, and it's going to become a greater place than they've ever had before in Jesus' name. And I bless them right now, and I thank you, God. And Father God, you're lifting them up right now, even now, today, out of that pit, out of that hole, out of that, out of that, that trouble. And they can feel you. They can feel your love. And that, God, you're bringing them to a greater place even today. You are making and correcting things that need to be corrected. That, Father God, their marriages are going to be stronger from this day forward. Their children are going to be stronger from this day forward. Their, their finances, their relationships with other people, God, they're going to rise out of that and they're going to enter into the dreams of God. That, Father God, it's not over yet. The best is yet to come. No matter how young or how old they are today, the best is yet to come, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, everyone, keep your, keep your eyes closed, and no one looking around right now. If you're here today, and you've been sitting in your seat, and you've been feeling something tugging on you, that there's more to this life, and you've never given Jesus an opportunity to come into your life today and change your life, God is knocking at the door right now of your life, saying, give your life to me. He is here today wanting to accept you into his family so that you can know what true love is that's unconditional and you can have faith in God to bring you through every situation of your life. If you've never given your heart to the Lord, he can't make you. It's a decision that you make right now today that you choose to trust him as faith that I trust you, God, because I know I'm missing something. You're sitting there, and you know you're miss, missing something in your life. There must be more to life than this. So if that's you, I want to pray with you right where you're at. I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. With no one looking around, this is between you and God right now. If you want me to pray with you right now to receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says when you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. And that's what we're going to do. We want to pray with you right where you're at. So if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand, and you can put your hand down. Anybody in here says, Pastor Sean, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give him all my life. Okay, you can put your hand down. Anybody else says, Pastor Sean, that's me. Anybody else says, that's me. That's, that's who I am. Okay, you can put your hands down. Thank you, Lord. One more time. Anybody else? This is an opportunity for you. God is opening up for you just to say yes to Jesus. Okay. That's what I want to do. I want to pray. And if you if you raised your hand, or even if you didn't, and but you want to do this, uh, we're going to all pray together aloud here. And when the Bible says when you make that decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, you will be saved. That means from this day forward, you'll, you're part of the family of God. That all your sin, everything that you've done wrong is forgiven. And today is a new day. You get to start again. So I want everyone to pray this prayer. Even if you pray this prayer before, just pray it out loud so they, they, can, they can do it also and be comfortable in doing this. Let's pray to the Lord right now. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Father God, I give you my life. I give you everything. All the good and all the bad. And I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me so that I might be saved, so I could be forgiven of my sins and I can be loved by you. And Father, right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior and I give him everything and I make him the boss of my life and from this day forward, I will follow Jesus. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise for that. Amen? Isn't he worthy? In just a moment, they're going to have instructions for you.
who, who raised your hand or you prayed that prayer for the first time, listen, you have a family here that is here for you, that is here to help you walk this walk of faith. Don't give up. Amen? Thank you for allowing me to be with you today. Be blessed. Have a great week.